Alright, well what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Whoa! So all of these parts down here represent the Dead Rabbit RTA. I was a huge fan, like an unbelievable fan of the Dead Rabbit RDA, so I was very much looking forward to this RTA. It's, I'll say it right now, it's a little bit weird. It's not my favorite RTA, but it's a very serviceable RTA, assuming that you can do everything correctly and, and wick it correctly. The construction on it is okay. I think Hellvape needs to tighten up their quality control just a little bit, but we're going to get into it right now. So first things first, here's that Dead Rabbit RTA deck. Looks a lot like the Dead Rabbit RDA deck. There's a little bit, there, you know, there's a few differences in it. The RTA deck overall is a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. The RDA deck is obviously much wider. The posts are much bigger. The screws are the same size, but the posts are much bigger. Same basic idea as the Dead Rabbit RDA, just shrunk down a little bit. As far as building goes, you got your positive here and your negative here. You got your positive here and your negative here. You're going to wick it this way and have your wicks down in this well for the RDA. You're going to wick it this way and have your juice down in this little capture cup right here for your RTA. So far, this is the only RTA that I have ever used where I felt the need to fluff out my wicks. That is a practice that I have rarely, if ever, done, but it is kind of a necessity in this Dead Rabbit RTA just because your coils are so far away from where your wicks meet the juice. Your wicks kind of get tucked in right here, and then you have this big travel distance all the way up to this dead rabbit deck. That's a lot to ask from cotton. That's a lot to ask from juice to travel that far. I, I wish with all of my wishes that this just would have been a postless deck design. It would have been so much easier to wick and it would have had more consistent hits. As it stands right now, you have to kind of wick this thing perfectly to get it to work properly. Too little cotton and it floods. Too much cotton and you get dry hit after dry hit after dry hit, which is what I've experienced with this RTA. And we're going to get to wicking that in just one second, but right now I want to turn our attention to the rest of the RTA. You have this glass right here that can pop off. I'm going to be using the bubble glass because even though I hate bubble glass, I do like the extra capacity it gives me. So we're going to attach that bubble glass on there. This is all one piece, meaning the chimney and the airflow are all one piece, and it does have like dead-ish rabbit style airflow. The RDA kind of had that slot that was in and angled down. The RTA very much has the same thing. It's a slot that's angled in and down and it comes through right there, right through those slots, kind of right at the side of your coils. When this is all done and assembled right there, yeah, your coils are going to be high. That airflow is kind of going to be hitting, I guess, just the top of your coils. And another thing real quick before we wick this, this spins in here independently, like the deck spins and the 510 spins on it. Just because of the way that this is constructed and it spins, you see this little notch right there? Well, that's gonna line up with a notch right there. You see this notch right here? It's gonna line up with that notch and this whole thing, uh, this whole thing kind of spins, right? So if I spin this, you can see it. You can see that 510 spinning in there. So you can't necessarily build this on a device and then wick it and then put the tank together. You're going to have to pop this off of your device to continue putting the tank together because of that spinning 510. And one last thing I wanted to mention up here, this is knurled and I kind of like this knurling. It makes it real easy to unscrew, expose your large kidney shaped juice fill holes for filling it up and then you can screw this back down. That knurling really helps. 810 drip tip on top as well. So the thing with this RTA is you don't want to go bananas with your cotton. These are two millimeter coils in there, so I've just pulled off some cotton bacon prime and kind of wicked it through there. There's some resistance to it, but I can kind of you know, pull this around just a, a little bit. You want it to be snug, but not too snug. All RTAs are a little bit of a balancing act with, you know, coil diameter, juice viscosity, the amount of cotton you're using. So the first thing we need to do is kind of eyeball where we're going to cut these. So we want the tips of our cotton dipping down into that little hole right there. So I'm going to cut it about, boom, here, which is long. That is a long wick for an RTA. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it like this. Yeah, I guess we're going to cut it right about there. Yeah, maybe just a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit more off. One thing you are going to want to do that I rarely, rarely do is you kind of fluff out these wicks. You kind of thin them out a little bit. I just take the end of my scissors and I just 
you know, I kind of thin them out, fluff them out and thin them out a little bit. People use the end of their tweezers. I just happen to use the end of my vape shears right here because it does it real quickly. And then you can kind of pop your fluffed cotton down into these little juice, uh, you know, these little juice capture holes right here. It's a fairly painless process. You just kind of have to, you know, get them in there. You want them to be kind of loose in there. You don't want them packing that little hole like too full of cotton. That leads directly to dry hits, just dry hits upon dry hits. So you want to thin out your cotton. You want to kind of press it down in here and just make sure there's enough room. Like I want to be able to get my scissors in here and move this wick around without being it, you know, without having it be way too snug. And even now with those wicks down in there, you can see that's a long way for juice to travel. That is a long distance for juice to travel eventually up to your coils. I like the dead rabbit deck but I think the dead rabbit deck in this RTA is just far, far too tall. We're going to juice all this up. We're going to get all of these wicks real wet, real moist like, just liquid everywhere. And then what you need to do is line up these little notches with where your juice holes kind of are. You kind of have to just eyeball it and push it down in there until you feel those tabs grab each other. Kind of just turn it like this. No, it's too far. I didn't line it up correctly. All right, let's try this again. Should be two little notches down there for this to grab onto. Yes, and then once you feel those grab, you can kind of screw this in the rest of the way. It feels real weird. When you get to this point, it feels real weird. It feels like you're forcing it to do something that it's not supposed to do. But yeah, once you get it all together, it's real nice. Fits together real well. You can see right there, that's where your juice is going to be hitting your cotton. So literally all that's left to do is we're just going to fill this up. Boosh! Just like that. And it's super easy. These giant fill holes on the top make it super, super easy. So yeah, Dead Rabbit are RTA. What we're going to do is I'm going to put this on my Squid Industries TAC-21. We're going to get back out to normal view, and we're finally going to vape this thing. Yeah, not too bad. So a few things I'm not sure if I mentioned or not. It's 25 millimeters around. Uh, it's a Pyrex glass tank. Full solid stainless steel construction, 810 drip tip. You get two mil capacity with the straight glass and four and a half mil capacity with the bubble glass, which is why I'm using the bubble glass. And this bubble glass, like I said before, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, it doesn't doesn't bother me at all. So here's the thing with the Dead Rabbit RTA. It's it's a fine RTA. It it's fine. I, I'm vaping it now. I'm enjoying it, and I would describe this particular vape experience that I'm getting from this tank as fine. It's got a relatively smooth airflow, and because of the way we wicked it, I feel like that wicking is is keeping up with it real well. It doesn't feel like I'm getting any dry hits, or and it also you know it doesn't have that thing where it feels like it's it's about to go dry. Some RTAs when when you wick them incorrectly or you pack too much cotton into those little cotton cups it has the tendency to just kind of feel like it's about to go dry but never actually goes dry that doesn't happen with this dead rabbit rta so look i like the dead rabbit rda i like the dead rabbit rda a lot i think he then got lightning in a bottle with that rda just the combination of that really nice deck it had a tiny little juice well in there it was a real unique rda i felt like there was some real innovation there i really liked the airflow i liked that i could blend my juice through the middle overall it just gave me a fantastic vape that i looked forward to every single time. I just love that little RDA. Now, I don't think that that Dead Rabbit RDA deck translates very well into an RTA. I feel like he then just went, well, let's put the dead, let's put the dead rabbit deck in an RTA. And that's kind of exactly what happened, but I don't think that deck is really conducive to an RTA, to a really good RTA experience. Now, there's all these weird things with coil height and placement a lot of people were putting their coils up higher on this in order to get better flavor as it stands my coils are low they're low to the deck as low to the deck as i can get them because when you put them up high you kind of get this 
very slight whistling sound and you get it a, just a hair you get it it's there's just this essence of this like whistly sound it's not quite a whistle it's more of like <laughs> it's more of like a tone it's more of like a note it's just this it's just this sound it's like this high pitchy sound you hear when you hit it and i'm going to do it now and hopefully you can maybe hear it a little bit and this is with the coils all the way down on the deck if you raise your coils up that whistling sound sort of increases Not really. I didn't actually really even hear it at all right then. The problem is this airflow kind of goes in from the top and when my coils are so low, my airflow, it's not reaching my coils. I'm not getting direct airflow to coil contact. It's not hitting the side of the coil. It's not going underneath the coil. I feel like it's just skimming the top of the coil when they're this low. And it's just not giving me that really saturated flavor that I really look for in a vape. Don't get me wrong. I can definitely taste my juice. This is loaded up with uh, Mox, the Mox juice, strawberry dragon fruit. It's a delicious flavor and it definitely tastes like Mox in this. It just doesn't quite taste like as rich or as dense as I've had it in a lot of other applications. And so what people are doing is they raise their coils up to get a little bit better of a flavor. Having your coils closer to your lips, yeah, you're gonna get better flavor. And having your coils closer to that airflow is gonna provide better flavor. The problem is it starts whistling at that point. So it's like a double-edged blade. You either raise your coils up to get better flavor, but you have a whistle, or you lower them down and you get a kind of a drop in flavor, but you get less of a whistle. That's my experience with the Dead Rabbit RTA. It's a, it's a very fine vape. I do really like that it has that like dead rabbit styling. Like you can tell that this is part of like the dead rabbit product line. It's got the big knurling at the top and the bottom, which is really helpful when you're screwing in that deck or really helpful when you're unscrewing this to fill up your juice. It's got the dead rabbit logo on there. It's got that dead rabbit airflow from the outside. You can just tell from looking at this airflow, the way it's shaped and the way that it's angled down, you go, yeah, that's the dead rabbit airflow. And truly and honestly, the only bummer part about this RTA for me is the deck. I just, the dead rabbit RDA deck, I don't think it translates very well into an RTA deck. The vape experience that you get from the Dead Rabbit RTA is a vape experience that can be had from multiple, 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 multiple other RTAs. So let's get down to brass tacks as it were. Are you going to need your vape budget hands if you want to check out the Dead Rabbit RTA? Ah, not really. Clicking around the internet, I found it anywhere from 30 to $35. A few places even had it for as low as like $27, $28, which is firmly out of vape budget hands territory. In fact, that falls more into the like, it's cheap enough just to buy it, just to try it out if you're interested. Unfortunately, it's gonna be real hard for me to recommend the Dead Rabbit RTA just because there's a lot of hoops you gotta jump through. It, it, there's a process to this. You kinda have to do everything correctly. The wicking can be real, real finicky. And there's a lot of, honestly, there's a lot of other RTAs out there that are easier to build, are easier to wick, and will deliver a bit more flavorful of a vape experience to ya. So I think we know the answer to this, but if we're gonna play the Aliens game where they come and take everything I have, or the FDA game where they come and take all of my vape gear and I have nothing left to vape. Is the Dead Rabbit RTA something I would seek out and buy? Ah, uh, probably not. That doesn't mean it's a bad RTA. It's just that this Dead Rabbit RTA isn't offering me anything that other RTAs in the past haven't already offered me as far as like the vape quality goes. And unfortunately, it turns out you can't just take a popular deck and throw it in an RTA and expect it to be just as good. Anyway, that's enough rambling from me. That's where I'm gonna leave that. YouTube doesn't allow links to external vape shops in the description anymore, so you're going to have to use your Google Foo, but that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, yeah, dude, let's keep on vaping.